and welcome to Daily Inner Lake News Now. I'm your host, Taylor Inman. We're taking a look at some of this week's biggest headlines and what's coming up for the Flathead Valley. It's the beginning of the holiday season, and Big Fork is once again being transformed into Montana's Christmas Village. The town enjoys a decades-long tradition of decorating downtown businesses, facilitated by the Big Fork Elves, a nonprofit group that reliably organizes 200 volunteers for the occasion. I sit down with head elf Michelle Shapiro, who tells us about how they prepare for decorating day each year. But first, here are some headlines. U.S. Representative Ryan Zinke introduced legislation in Congress this week that aims to ensure Flathead Lake avoids another year of abnormally low water levels. The Fill the Lake Act would require the Department of the Interior to ensure full pool levels for Flathead Lake for most of the summer season. The legislation would direct the Secretary of the Interior to maintain Flathead Lake between 2,892 and 2,893 feet above sea level from June 15th until September 15th. The level would be maintained through releases of water from the Hungry Horse Reservoir located upriver of Flathead Lake. If passed, the measure will ensure that Flathead Lake stays at around full pool until after Labor Day, according to Zinke. Read this full report by Kate Heston at dailyinterlake.com. The Flathead National Forest is considering nine special use permits that would allow businesses to operate guiding services this winter on federal public land. The Mountain Guides Montana is requesting 200 service days to offer clients avalanche education and winter travel skill courses on terrain adjacent to Whitefish Mountain Resort. Some of the training would take place in the Canyon Creek area. Whitefish Vertical Adventure Guides is also requesting to use terrain off of Whitefish Mountain Resort for guided backcountry skiing trips. Glacier Adventure Guides is requesting 75 service days for guided Nordic skiing and snowshoe trips and for outdoor education classes. For the Tally Lake Ranger District, Winter Wonderland is requesting 200 service days for guided snowmobile tours. Rooted Heart, Whitefish Shuttle, and Glacier Nordic Club are seeking permission to use the trails at Round Meadow. Action Rentals and Snow Bike Nation are requesting use forest-wide for guided motorized tours. Comments will be accepted through November 27th and should be submitted via email to comments-northern-flathead at usda.gov. Please include 2023 Winter Rec Special Use in the subject line. And a few Flathead Valley residents reported seeing strange lights in the sky last week. O'Brien Bird said he woke up to a light coming through his bedroom window in Martin City at around 4.30 a.m., prompting him to go outside and get a better look. He said when he got outside, he saw the object had four points of light that were grouped together and hovering in the sky, surrounded by bright, pulsing lights. He said it was too big to be a star. Through a scope, Bird confirmed his earlier observations of a spherical object with four lights inside, only now he could see the rapid pulsating light was changing colors from red to blue to green and more just as quickly. Bird decided to go inside and warm himself up when he turned around and saw another one of the objects to the south, followed by a third object to the southwest. When he returned outside with a cup of coffee, the objects had disappeared. To read more about what residents saw last week, visit dailyinterlake.com. The Big Fork Elves work with downtown businesses in Big Fork each holiday season to ensure that Electric Avenue looks like something out of a Hallmark movie set. Join me as I chat with head elf Michelle Shapiro. She tells us about how they pull it off every year. Uh, It all started about uh, 45 years ago. Uh, Three members of the Big Fork community decided that our little town needed to be decorated. And uh, they took it upon themselves to do it for the first couple of years. And as interest grew, it actually officially grew into the Big Fork Elves. And as I said, we've been doing it for about 45 years at this point. Decorating day is always the Saturday before Thanksgiving. So we're decorated for the beginning of the holidays. We have our bulb twisting and tree gathering breakfast, which is where we go through. And we every merchant in the downtown area has a bin specifically for them so it's it's the number of lights are in there are, are specifically tailored for the size of their storefront so everything is really well organized and really well planned out and basically the bulb twisting and tree gathering breakfast we go through the bins make sure we plug it the lights in make sure there's no broken bulbs or burnout bulbs that the plugs are still in good uh, condition so we don't have a fire hazard and and that they have everything in their bins that they need scissors twine you name it. We break off after we eat breakfast, which is supplied by the Pocket Stone Cafe. It's really good. But uh, we all get together, we have breakfast, and then we kind of break off into our little groups. A portion of us go and we work on the bins and the bulbs themselves. Uh, Another uh, section will go out and gather the trees, which Rick Trembath has for 20 years has prearranged with um, property owners in the Big Fork area for us to come out and cut our what we refer to as our little Charlie Brown trees, which we need 900 of those. And so it's a big 
project every year to go out and basically we're, we're just clearing out people's property you know the small trees that are coming up underneath their big trees and so forth so it's actually we're doing a service to the community as well but we gather up the 900 trees that we need and then those get delivered into specific spots around town um, and uh, and then the third group actually is our, our bow babes and they get together and all of those little red bows that we have on these 900 Charlie Brown trees um, have to be refluffed because they've been squished in a bag for the last year, and uh, and then a lot of and they go through and they figure out what, which bows are not in, in good condition anymore, and they'll toss those and make new bows. So we've got the bow babes, we've got the tree gatherers, and we got the bulb twisters, and that is actually this Saturday, a day after tomorrow, 8 a.m. at the Garden Bar. Everyone is welcome. You do not have to notify me that you're coming. You just show up and be willing to work and enjoy a great meal. And then the following Saturday, of course, is the Saturday before Thanksgiving, and that is our actual decorating day. We meet in front of the Big Fork Inn, uh, have a few speeches, um, and uh, we uh, have coffee and donuts supplied by Harvest Foods. And then we distribute bins and say, go forth and decorate. <laughs> yeah. And they go for it. They put up the lights. They also take care of uh, putting up the trees all over town. And those little 900 trees are everywhere. <laughs> yeah, they are. <laughs> and uh, so they take care of that. And then uh, once we're done, we all meet at the garden bar again for a chili feed, which is supplied by the uh, Big Fork Lady Service Club. Oh, that's nice. So yeah, it's nice after you've been outside kind of freezing all morning decorating and so forth to go have a nice bowl of hot chili and a cup of coffee or whatever and, uh, and then take off. Generally for decorating day we have about 200 volunteers um, so we've got more than enough volunteers, and we actually, believe it or not, managed to get the entire town decorated in about two and a half hours, yeah. which is amazing, considering, <laughs> you know, we're doing it, we're putting up 10,000 feet of garland, but, you know, with that many volunteers, it goes pretty fast. Um, undecorating day isn't until the last Saturday of January, so this year it'll, it's going to be January 27th. Again, we meet in front of the Big Fork Inn, 8 a.m., donuts, coffee, no speeches, um, and we go forth and just take everything down, put take it back it in their bins, and put it away. Unfortunately, on undecorating day, we get about 40 volunteers. Oh, nobody, not as many people are as excited yeah, it's to not take a, it down. Yeah, apparently it's not as much fun taking it down as it was putting it up, but we need the help. So, you know, I'm just putting it out there. Um, if you're available last Saturday of January, please come down and give us a hand because it's a lot of work taking it all down for 40 people. Let's see what events are coming up. Remember, you can find art classes, live music, and anything community-related by going to dailyinterlake.com slash events and checking out our events calendar. Join for a fun day of shopping this weekend at Kalispell Center Mall in the old Herbergers building. Admission is free to check out local vendors and find homemade gifts, sweet treats, clothing, and more. Become a vendor or find out more information by emailing kalispellweekendmarket at gmail.com. And Daily Interlake subscribers can still secure their chance to join us for our next Press Play show on December 1st with John Floridis. The show takes place in our press room and gives readers a chance to hear from local musicians while taking a peek behind the scenes at the newspaper. Find a link to secure your ticket by going to dailyinterlake.com slash events and clicking into the event page. Thanks for joining us. News Now is a podcast from the Daily Interlake. We're proud to be the largest independent newsroom in Montana and the oldest paper in the Valley. Consider becoming a subscriber to support our work. Call circulation at 406-755-7018 or go to the subscribe tab in the top right corner of our website. And if you haven't already, subscribe to our YouTube channel to never miss an episode of The Pod. Everybody stay safe and have a great week.